פולין. כמה יחודים יש בפולין? ‫אתם יודעים כמה יחודים יש בפולין? ‫אלפיים, שלוש אלף. ‫אז מה השאלה שלי היא, ‫מי זה ג'ו? ‫אלא פרונטה סקין איזו יחודים. ‫אוקיי, יש לי תשובה. ‫מצוין. ‫מי את? ילדה יפה, דניאלה, גרה בירושלים, כן, עיניים יפים, ומה עוד? ירושלים. עכשיו שאלה, now question, only girls who are named Daniela and live in Yerushalayim are Jewish, or do we have other people who are Jewish? And they who are. do we call a Jew besides Daniela? Well, they, they are a lot of them. And, uh, okay, but the question is, who is, who is a Jew? Somebody who is born of a Jewish mother or converts according to Allah. According to Halaha. Okay. So, the answer is, I don't know how many Jews are in Poland. Why? Because... There are people who were born from the mother, but, okay, does the person have to consider themselves Jewish? No. Okay, so person, the Mishu, okay, <laughs> Katarzyna, Pauline, Katarzyna, the Shem Shela Pauline, Kasia, okay. <laughs> There is a mother who is Jewish, and mother, and mother, and mother, oh, okay. okay, but she's Christian, Catholic, okay. not Sri. She said, I'm not Jewish. I'm not Jewish. Is she Jewish? Yes. She, she is yes. Jewish. Yeah. For us, she is Jewish. For her, she is not Jewish. Okay. I don't know about her. She is not coming to the synagogue because she is Christian. She is not coming to the Kehila because she is Christian. But she is a Jewish. Okay. There is Katarzyna. She doesn't know. Her mother was Jewish and her grandmother was Jewish. Why? Holocaust. Okay. Yes, Holocaust. Ain Yehudim. Okay. Darkonim, mm -hmm. the passports were not Jewish, were not Jewish. After the war, we have a girl who is Jewish. He, she doesn't know about this. Stories like this in Poland, we have many, many, many stories. Someone discovered that they are Jewish after many years. I have friends who are 15 years old, and they found a paper in Hebrew. I said, what's this? Ah, because your aunt is in Israel. Why my aunt is in Israel? Ah, because your aunt is Jewish. Why my aunt is Jewish? Because you are Jewish. And then they discovered they are Jewish. Some of them said, oh, wow, I is a Yofi. I'm Jewish. I want to go halaha, rabbanim, synagogue. Okay. Some of them said, I don't care. I don't, I don't want. Some of them still don't know they're Jewish. So we had a priest. You know who's priest? Not three? Mm -hmm. Priest? El Padre. El Padre. <laughs> And El Padre in Poland discovered he is Jewish. Bueno, hay mucha gente que ni siquiera sabe que es judía a partir de que pasó el holocausto, eh, se borraron los nombres judíos, no hay papeles, entonces de repente viene una chica cristiana que en, en todas sus generaciones su mamá, su abuela, todos eran judíos, pero ella hoy día es cristiana, entonces por, para ella ella no es judía porque ella es cristiana, pero entonces... Viene, tiene ahora recién una amiga de 15 años que recibe un papel y tiene algo escrito en hebreo. Entonces, eh, ¿por qué aquí está esto en hebreo? Ah, porque es de tu tía que lo envió de Israel. ¿Y por qué mi tía está en Israel? Porque es judía. ¿Y por qué ella es judía? Bueno, porque tú eres judía. Entonces, así ahora descubren que ellos son judíos y, wow. bueno, ¿qué se hace con eso ahora? Uh, our story is that the grandmother was dying and she said, oh, Come, I need to teach you how to make challah. Mm -hmm. Because you will need this. And she died. And then the girl finds out that the grandmother was Jewish. Wow. Okay. So we have those who know they are Jewish and they come to synagogue. We have those 
who know they are Jewish, they don't come to synagogue, and we have those who do not know they are Jewish at all. Okay. Then we have those who have father Jewish, uh, Abba, Yehudi, Imalo. They feel Jewish. Okay. And in Poland, maybe also in Spain or other places, the father, Abba, is the one who tells what will be at home. If the mother is Jewish and father is not Jewish, they will not go to synagogue, right? Because mm -hmm. this is the father's part. If the father is Jewish, they will go to synagogue. But the kid is not Jewish. Only the father is Jewish. But the kid feels Jewish. So then, he is not counted to Minyan. He is not called by us Jew, but he feels Jewish. Or he will make Gyur, or he won't be counted. And we have many like this. Or we have grandparent Jewish, not father. Father is a Zera Israel. Okay, grandfather. Zelo, it's not already Zera Israel. It's, but still, they come to synagogue. They pray. They, they are not Christian. Do we count them as a Jew? No. Do we count them as a part of the Kehila? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to translate? Yeah. So, hay gente que, por ejemplo, tiene que la parte del padre es judío y la mamá no. Entonces, ellos, aun cuando no son judíos, según la Lajá, se sienten parte de la comunidad porque tienen antepasados judíos. Entonces puede ser que porque va el papá a rezar o el abuelo, ellos se, ellos van a la comunidad y son parte. Entonces, ahí como en Polonia, a comparación de otras comunidades en el mundo, ellos se consideran judíos, aunque tienen solamente un padre judío, aunque no son par, por alágicamente judíos, pero sí son parte de la comunidad de aceptados porque tienen un antepasado judío. Okay. Okay. ¿Cierto? Okay. Es como en Alemania, hay un franco de la misma. Uh -huh. es muy cerrada la comunidad bueno, por lo que puedo entender a mí es muy cerrada y también no todos son este, de, tienen papá o mamá uh -huh. igual no tienen todos no, no saben muchos por qué llegan ahí from her experience also in Germany there uh, the, are these kind of uh, families that yes. even they don't, are not allegedly uh, Jewish. Jewish they are coming and uh, they are part of the community uh -huh. and also there is this uh, joke that If someone has a last name, Goldstein, Goldberg, they are not Jewish. Why? Because the father is Jewish. You, mm -hmm. you got the last name from the father. Yeah. So if you're Goldberg, Goldstein, it means the father is Jewish, not the mother. But if you are Kowalska, Krzyzewska, Polish name, this comes from the father, but probably the mother is Jewish. Mm -hmm. so, so why? Because in Poland, after the Holocaust... There were not enough Jews, so they were intermarriages. Jew and now non-Jew. My mother is Jewish, but my father is not Jewish. Mazal Sheli, I'm mm -hmm. lucky. <laughs> but my friends were not lucky. Father is Jewish, not mother. Mm -hmm. But after the war, there were not enough Jews, so they mixed. Mm -hmm. Today, this starts to be a problem, because people start going to synagogues, start being religious. So we have conversion, and this is like 20 years. This is Mashu Hadar, something new. Mm -hmm. Okay, so second question is, so I don't know. Okay. So I don't know how many Jews. I don't. I don't know the answer. I don't know how many Jews are in Poland. And um, second question is that I got always. Is there anti-Shemot in Poland? Okay. My question is, what's anti-Shemot? Question to you. What's anti-Shemot? How do we know that someone doesn't like Jews? Um, so the answer is, anti-Shemot is when someone do not like Jews. Sababa. Mm -hmm. How do I know that someone do not like Jews? When they are uh, uh, talking about the Jewish in the not the 
not polite nice way. way, not nice way, or, okay. <laughs> or when they are uh, doing a um, difference between uh, people that are Jewish or the Okay. The people make discrimination. They are the the way they are uh, treating you when okay. they look at you. I'm okay. Sorry. So there are not enough Jews to fill it. Like my son has kipa. He's ten years old. Kipa pelt. Sababa. No problem. I, no problem. For me, Kisui Rosh, people don't know. People think I'm a gypsy. <laughs> people think I'm a hippie. You know, hi- hippies. People don't know. With my son, they think it's a girl. They don't know why I felt. So they don't say, ah, I hate you, Jew. They don't know we're Jewish. Um... Welcome, please have Sorry. a seat. You came with your Sorry, sister. That's so sister. nice. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about eating, but this is okay, summer. that's fine. Um, okay, I'm speaking about anti mm. Then you can add something. Okay. I see. Uh, so, okay, so in Poland, there are signs of the wall, Jews and David star. It's bad. We don't like it. But this is not about Jews. It's more about the football team. I need your translation. What's a football team? Football? Football, football. team. I'm a team for the football. Okay. Yeah. This comes from many years ago. There was a Jewish football team and non-Jewish. Okay. Before the war in Poland, 30% was Jewish of population. Yes? Lodz was 33-4. Uh, Warsaw was... 15, I think. Krakow was 25. Wow. Yes, it's a lot. But there were also shtetls with 99% Jewish. Everyone was Jewish. Wow. So there were Jewish schools, Jewish football teams, Jewish everything. Today, there are not so many Jews. We don't have football teams. Are Jewish. But this comes from la 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 la. So this company was Jewish, this wasn't Jewish. So now they call each other Jew, but they don't remember who was Jewish before the war. Mm. So this is between them. It's not against Jews. It's again, it's, it's like, you're stupid. But it's not nice for Jews. Is it anti shemiot Or people don't think. Right? I, it's like, if I say like, or you're, you're fat, you're stupid. I'm stupid. If I say you're Jewish, you're, you, all Jews are... I'm not educated well, because I don't know Jews. If you ask them, you really hate Jews, they will tell you, I don't know Jews. So how can I hate them? Yeah. Okay. I know if you want to translate. Or they, yes. Yeah. Dice que es un poco tonto el decir que si tú odias judíos porque primero para odiar algo tú tienes que conocerlo. Entonces le pregunto si tú lo conoces, tú conoces a alguien que no, no, no conoce, pero entonces ¿cómo puedes odiar a alguien que no conoces? Okay. Mm. And then we have, so this is, so the question about antishemit or not antishemit are very, very difficult. Mm. Now when I came to Israel, and this might be also for you, and this is more about Jews in Poland, but Jews in general, but also how we treat others. On this day in Poland, there was a Jewish couple, women with Kisuirosh and a man. And then lady on the airport, you flew, right? You know how it looks. I need to look at you. And she was doing like this. Then the woman said, Zelotza Noah, Zelotza Noah. The woman said, I have to do it. This woman couldn't understand what is going on. This one, take off your hat. No, I can't. Yes, no. And they didn't understand each other. The woman thought, everyone in Poland is anti hmm. So that's why she needs to take off Kisui Rosh. That's why... She is looking at her like this. 
This woman thought she is Jewish, she will make problems because always they make problems. And they shouted at each other. And there was no problem. This woman on the gate was not anti Shemit. She needed to check everyone. This woman, she, she doesn't hate Poland, but she thinks every Polish people is anti Shemit. Mm -hmm. So, what on the end, she was crying, and what she said, I don't, now I understand why Holocaust happened in Poland. Everyone hates Jews. And I was trying to talk to them. They spoke only Polish. She spoke only Hebrew. They didn't understand what, what is going on. So she will come back to Israel and say, everyone in Poland is anti-Semitic. People in Poland will say, all Jews make problems. Hmm. Okay? So it's a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. <laughs> so if we have anti semitic in Poland, it's more about less education, we don't learn much about Holocaust, and Poland don't like to say there was Holocaust in Poland, mm -hmm. which is difficult in whole studies. Like Germany said, Slicha, we did it, Slicha, Anachno mit Animitzteret. Okay? They did it. Poland have problems with saying Polish, po Jews, died the the whole towns were killed yes eh ya entonces está hablando que piensa que más el problema del antisemitismo es un tema de educación que la gente no está educada y no conoce no en verdad tienen la cultura de saber qué pasó y piensan nada más por el trato y por un malentendido que la forma en que ellos tratan a los judíos ah por eso son antisemitistas acá Y el, la manera en que se comportan los judíos, ah, dicen los polacos, por eso hubo holocausto, porque estos judíos no se saben comportar. Oh, Entonces es un malentendido de yo, culturas. Yo tengo una pregunta. ¿Cómo vive, bueno, ella viene otra de Polonia, ¿cómo vive con la nueva ley que, hay, que, que está mirando el holocausto y que no se puede, no se puede culpar a los polacos de, 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 de crimen del holocausto? Ni hablar del holocausto. De Sograim, eh, she is asking me, what what do you think about the the new new uh, rule, new law in uh, Poland about that that they deny they need the Holocaust happens in Poland? It's wrong. They shouldn't do it. Um, but sometimes in media and Laura could talk about this, we get the information. We, we get, this is, this is what happened. We see only this with other context. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't know because I didn't read the law, everything. Mm -hmm. I only read what's in media. I read what Israel thinks, what Germany thinks, what France thinks, what Poland thinks, what my friends think. I don't know who read the whole law. I'm not saying the law is okay. I'm saying that the politics in Poland should be more careful because they do not know how to speak about Holocaust, about camps, about this and this. Uh, I think this could be misunderstanding, but it's true that today Polish politics really do not know much about Holocaust, don't know anything about what happened during the war, deny that Polish people had also killed the Jews. It's like a big history denying. Like, no, that's not true. And this law was showing that actually Poland do not know what... This is a taboo. You know the word, taboo. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. we don't want to touch it. Like, because there are too many ghosts. We're afraid of it. Why Germany did it? Maybe this was easier for them because it wasn't in Poland. If you go in Lodzi and you can, like, or any other place, and you can imagine, 70 years ago, there were synagogues and Jewish schools and boys with, like, like Masharim today, like Nebrak today, and you see, like, naked Polish women, church, priest, and you feel like, oh, my God. Who, but if you, 
if you are in this place, I'm not saying you're allowed not to talk about this. I'm saying it's very difficult. I just went through Oświęcim. Oświęcim is called Auschwitz. This is a normal village. Me, I don't understand how come someone lives in Auschwitzim, Auschwitz and sees the Auschwitz camp from the windows. They are not responsible for what happened there, but they live there and every single day they see those plays. I cannot understand this. But where should they go? Will they make Aliyah only because they don't want to live there? Will they change the place? They used to live there forever. But so I think like what their grandparents did during the Holocaust. Who helped those Jews? They were just running away from Auschwitz camp. Was there someone who helped them? Or was there someone who shot them? And now their grandchildren living there knowing there is this, this, this something's happened there. And this is your land, your houses. There are Polish people living in old Jewish houses, in Lodzi. And, and this is Poland. Polish people never talked about this, to say like, we're guilty, or we haven't done much to help Jews, or we did a lot not to help Jews because they're af I don't I don't know because they're stupid because they're afraid Poland is very afraid place. Bueno, ella dice que en los polacos temen de todo lo que pasó y prefieren negarlo de alguna manera. Ahora lo que nosotros vemos en la media, la gente se enfoca en una pequeña cosa y ignora todo el el contexto. Entonces ella ignora la ley misma. No, no la ha leído, ella ha escuchado aquí allá uh -huh. de sus conocidos, de gente de otros países, pero no exactamente estudiado el tema en sí, entonces no puede dar una opinión objetiva, pero eh, sí cree que en general los polacos tienen mucho miedo de decir, sí, esto pasó aquí, como que no es algo que aceptan con facilidad. Pero y, sí, los y lo, sí eso, eso, eso hay, hay eh, pruebas, pero... Otra vez, no es algo de lo que ellos estén orgullosos ni que quieran mostrar, entonces prefieren negar la realidad. Ok. Mm -hmm. mm. So Poland has this lesson okay. to do. And also there are more and more people who talk about this. But if there is someone who will say like, oh, that's it. Uh, if there is someone who will be like, actually Polish people also killed Jews, then you have this whole Polish people say that's not true. Many Polish people think that actually Holocaust didn't exist. Or that Jews just want money. And this is this big stereotype. And in Poland, where there were so many Jews, there are many, many stereotypes about the Jews. And the stereotypes still exist. So today, I don't know how it's in Israel. And today, if you have a child running around, you'll be like, go to your mama because policemen will take you. Okay, 200 years ago it was because which will take you, but 100 years ago was because the Jew will take you. Why? <laughs> because, but why? You know how Orthodox Jews look like, right? So you have a normal Polish people like dressed like this, and then you have this Jew. This, this makes him taller. Very. This makes him taller. Black. I heard from a girl, a Jewish girl, that she was afraid of Orthodox Jews wow. because they looked scary. I went to Mea Sharim three days ago and I was scared, scared, not by them. You know, it's like, it's, it's, if you look colorful and like this, but if, so the easy way for Polish people was this Jew will take you. They spoke different language. They smelled differently. They ate onion. No one ate onion by then in Poland. They eat onion and garlic. Mm. So this was all the stories that the big Jew will come and take you. From this we have stories about Jews taking non-Jewish blood for matzah. That's the stereotype. Or that the Jews, because where there was a village, 
there was this um, where you have water from well. well so it happened that half of the village was very very sick and the other half was not very sick the Jewish half so obviously the Jews put poison into a well no the Jews knew how to wash the hands they didn't know much about bacteria but they had a law of netilatia dying if you make netilatia dying twice a day your hands are less dirty if you wash yourself once a week your hands are dirty if there is disease you die from the disease but the stereotype went so you have a half of the village dying and the other half is eating onion is eating then looks like huge something then you have the stereotype because you don't know them they don't know you and those stereotypes are still they still exist but if you educate the people then there will be less and less stereotypes this is about like not understanding and knowing each other and like a story I don't know if you want to mm-hmm. translate it yeah entonces yo encontré un poco de lo que fue eh, antes hace muchos años observan un judío como un ejemplo no bueno entonces el niño, ahora el niño en la calle le dice te va a llevar el policía si no te metes a la casa antes era te va a llevar el judío que lo vean como algo grande alto con el, su vestimenta mm-hmm. no porque fuera algo malo en serio pero es por la apariencia y que también eran los que eh, comían eh, cebollas y <ríe> ajos en ese entonces y también el tema de por ejemplo hubo un, una vez una un cuento donde ellos tenían un manantial y, y parte de la media la mitad de la villa estaban enfermos y la otra mitad no entonces por qué entonces decían ah los judíos pusieron veneno en, en, en el manantial nuestro en nuestra agua entonces no no es esto sino que había otra conciencia de limpieza con los judíos por el tema de las costumbres como es la de Dan y los otros no las tenían entonces es algo como una parte de la historia so today when there are more books about Jews and Jews in Poland. No, she's like confirming that what I what I mm-hmm. yes, so talking about. Today there are more and more people who talk about Jews and about Poland and the the, the story is very dark. Like the story is dark. It's not as toda esta historia está como muy oscura. Ahora ya hay libros, ya se cuenta más de esto, pero antes no. Y aún así, aún cuando hay más conciencia, eso como que se queda muy así oscuro. And still, <coughs> still the po- <coughs> Brave, actually, you can talk. <laughs> um, so till Poland will not... Uh, till Poland will not make their lesson, then probably there always be this ghost. So whenever someone speaks about the Jews, then this show up like, oh, Jews. And also people in Poland understand that actually something bad happened during the war. And they they see it. So we have this antishemiot, which does exist, but because the people are afraid. And then if they hear Hebrew, they are afraid that people will come to take their properties after the war that the properties were taken from Jews but then there is this other set of people who are very interested in Judaism and there are many converts and there are many people who study Judaistica and many people who are really interested like in Krakow there is Jewish Jewish festival it's like more than 25 years run by non-Jew or there are Jewish projects done by non-Jew and if you ask them or in Lodz, for example, there is this non-Jew who cleans cemetery. We talked about cemetery. He is not connected to the Jewish co- community. He is not Jew, but he feels responsible. So you do have many people in Poland who feel that something is missing, right? Because also the Jews that were strongly in the Polish culture. So sometimes we read some book, and we don't even know that the Jew wrote this book, uh, assimilated Jew. But someone who is well educated that know that actually the Polish culture was built by Jews. And they're missing it and they feel it. So they want to do something. So there is a Jewish festival and many hundred people come from all over the world. There is the Ju- Judaism studies in Krakow, in Warsaw. In Lodz it starts. Non Jews are doing something. 
So on the other side, and when we had this Jew, the, this law, there were so many non-Jews screaming on a Facebook, this is bad. It, it wasn't us Jews saying like, actually the law is stupid. The Polish people, not Jewish, were saying, this is so bad. And we had a man who came to, to the Jewish community and he said, I'm Polish and I'm so sorry for Poland. One person, but it's a step. If one person says, I'm sorry for what is going on, then this might make a wave of people who are trying to understand, to to fight with something that's wrong, which is anti mm-hmm. yeah. Bueno, entonces ahora los hay muchísima más conciencia y um, ahora hace 25 años está organizándose un festival que es cada año viene gente de todo el mundo, Polonia, es un festival en Cracovia y bueno, poco a poco también la misma gente no judía polaca está tomando conciencia de lo que pasó y por ejemplo hay ahora un proyecto de limpiar un cementerio que es uno de los más grandes en Europa y lo está, están participando gente también no judía ok do you have any questions for now ok so now I could talk about um, what are the Jewish communities right because the Poland is is 14 times bigger than Israel, but there are much less Jews. So there are many places in Warsaw, Krakow, and Lodz, and and Wrocław. So there are like four cities and all together 10 rabbis and rabbi niot. So there are also women who are rabbis, reform and conservative. So 10 rabbis, it's not much. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more than one. And it's more than nothing. And in Krakow and in Lodz, there are Shlichim of Shave Israel. And in Wrocław and Warsaw, there are just some rabbis. Mm. And in Warsaw and in Krakow, you have also lots of tourists. And in Warsaw, there is Jewish school. Only one third is Jewish, but it's Jewish school, louder. And in Warsaw, there is Chabad. And a Jewish kinder of Chabad. In Krakow, there are two Jewish kindergartens, no Jewish school. So there is JCC in Krakow, Jewish Community Center, and there is also Chabad. And in Lodz, there is Jewish kindergarten and no Jewish school. Uh, as I said, the Jewish school is only in Warsaw, but there is a Jewish internet school. No, so that's not. They have Jewish schools. So the Vrosa, there are three Jewish schools. <coughs> but, okay, one of them. You could call it Jewish, but so that's the question. When do you call Jewish school uh-huh. a Jewish school? I mean, if all the kids are not Jewish and it's not, Jewish. and there is like no Jewish food, and they're like it's difficult because also uh. louder, only one third is Jewish, but also I don't know, like we spoke like Halaki Jewish, not Halaki Jewish, Jewish root. Like, what do you mean? Mm. And the they school, learn Jewish subjects, they, they learn Hebrew. I don't know how much Torah they learn. They yeah, learn a like lot about Israel also. I mean, they do? Yeah, I and mean, I was in the schools and I saw there's like the decorations and the, the things. The decorations. So, so this is... And I, they, did the pro- they did programs for that we saw. Yes. And also they, they knew, like when I did demonstrations, I showed them pictures of Israel and like they, they, they understood, they connected. Yes. It wasn't something strange to them. So for example, the difference is that in Warsaw, you have rabbis who teach and, and you have much more Hebrew-speaking teachers. In Wrocław, there is only one rabbi, uh-huh. and that's all. And he cannot go to every single school. Hmm. We could, I mean, you've been to Wrocław, and you've been to those schools. Yeah, all of them. All of them, all of three? I think so. I think we were in all three. So you could say they're Jewish. Oh, well, I don't know about the kids. Yes. But it was Jew-ish. <laughs> so this is good. If we already have a school mm-hmm. that has place for Jewish kids, Jewish activities, it's already great. Mm-hmm. And th- those are new schools. So this is like plus. It's not like in Poland are closing things, but there are more and more. Uh, so let's say there are two Jewish schools in Brazil. Mm-hmm. Three Jewish. I remember two of them. Maybe I only went to two. I don't remember. Maybe the third was international. Mm-hmm. Mm, and then we have rabbis, and there is always a question if there is a minyan. And Minyan uh, means Halahi Jew who had Jewish mother or converted, as you said. In Lodz, like in Krakow and in Warsaw, you have different 
synagogues for Shabbat, so you have me, me um, you have it, uh, Minyan, and in large, mostly, let's say yes, um, and and everyone calls it renewal of Jewish life, which is not really renewal because renewal is when you will have people wearing war they used to wear with before the war, which won't happen again. But you could say it's like a new Jewish life. And and then I could speak about the problem, which might be difficult. Um, okay, I will try to... Okay, so we have Judaism, right? And Torah, mitzvot. And many mitzvot help people to gather, to be together. So we have mitzvah of tzedakah, and mitzvah of bikur cholim, and mitzvah of different mitzvot that I could ask you, we could talk about, that help people to gather, to be together. Okay. And then, before the war, Jews assimilated. Yes? Maybe it's too difficult to... I don't know, do you want to translate or... No, after. After, okay. <laughs> so I will talk mainly to you. What's Okay, so we have the Torah. And then... Uh... Sorry, they want to write. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, because this is, I think it's interesting not only about Poland, but in general about Judaism, that we have Jews who are religious, and they are gathering around the Torah. And Torah gives us mitzvot, so we can gather as a people. But then when Jews assimilated, they left Torah, but they said, we want to still gather. So they still did Bikur Cholim and Tzedakah and uh, gathering. They stopped reading Torah, they started reading other books, but still that were trying to gather. Then Holocaust came. And now mm -hmm. there is a renewal, but it starts with religion. So we have rabbis who are teaching halachot, all the halachot, but some of the part of gathering is missing because Polish people are kind of like, we don't know anymore how to do it. So there is a problem with tzedakah, there is a problem with bikur cholim, we are not very well with this. We used to be during communism, but this is others. But now, the new Polish Jews, they know everything about Basar and Chalav, or Shomer Shabbos. But they are not very well with tzedakah, with, with gathering, with chinuch, education, with no Lashon Hara. They love Lashon Hara. But it's part of Torah. So the part of us being together is left behind and it's more like, okay, going to synagogue and, and davening, but less about maybe I do not go to synagogue, but I go and visit someone who is sick. So this is something new. And many rabbis need to deal with people who want to make conversion, which is beautiful, but they didn't, which is very difficult in Poland, how to teach them, for example, about the, the graves. We just talked about the graves, that in light there are many, many Jewish graves. <laughs> and there are many Jewish graves, but there aren't enough Jews who will take care of the graves. And everyone who is a ballet truva or a convert, they need to have this society who empower all of us in this being together. I don't know how to explain this, but I think it's it's common like be, like who we are as a Jew without religion, what is religion without us as a Jew, and what's Yiddishkeit? That's the main question. Okay. Ella dice que la principal pregunta es eh, like, que es en la religión, en judío, 
y qué es un, qué, qué un judío tiene que hacer con la religión. Más o menos, ¿verdad? La pregunta es si un judío es religioso, ¿qué significa la religión para el judío? ¿Y qué, y pa, ¿qué significa el judío para la religión? ¿Sí? Entonces se está explicando eso. Ok, so it's in general question. So we have many Jews, like me, I didn't grow up religious, I'm religious now. I learned it in Israel, I didn't learn it from my mother. I learned from my grandmother about tzedakah, about bikur cholim, I, and uh, not religion, so I have it in my heart. I know it from my heart, from my mother, my grandmother. But let's say I didn't know about this, or let's say I'm not Jewish, that I need to learn from other people. But if every single person is the same, from whom shall we learn? It's like all of us, uh, we're children. And this is very difficult. That's why we need Shlichim from abroad. We just talked about the woman who came and, and taught us Hebrew. And it's not only Hebrew. She brought us Israel. Or Laura once came. And this is like, we are like, okay, those are Israelis. We need people who sing with kids, who are open. Polish people are not so open. And they don't like each other. So it's, so it's difficult to build a Jewish life if you don't like each other. Because Jewish life is built on being with each other. So it's a different level of Judaism than we had before the war. That's why I wouldn't call it renewal, because it's, it's something else. Yeah. Okay. So, please. I'm, what I'm hearing from you is that there's kind of a schism between what the people are learning how to be to serve Hashem, and then the, and then you're saying that the, they don't yet have ben Aram Yes. They, they yes. don't know the ben Aram They need to learn that. Yes. So they know how to serve Hashem by eating kosher food. And most important is where they will get the kosher from, food from. And the less important is if the person behind them needs help. Entonces dice que ella, eh, por ejemplo, el judaísmo ya lo vivió, desde, lo, lo aprendió desde muy joven porque su abuela y cuando estuvo aquí en Israel, ella lo aprendió de las costumbres de, por ejemplo, visitar a los enfermos, de, eh, de dar eh, caridad. Pero eh, la religión, ella no, o sea, porque ella no creció como religiosa, pero esas costumbres sí las tuvo, las aprendió de su abuela. Pero ya después cuando aprendió religión, pues ya es el tema del kashrut, de las costumbres, la, los rezos, todo eso. Pero entonces eso existía en su corazón. Y ahora lo que les preocupa es que ahora, por ejemplo, la gente en Polonia quieren enseñarles no solo la vida religiosa, las mitzvot, lo, la... La alajá, las leyes de cómo hacer las cosas, sino también eh, promover los temas como la tzedaká, la, ka, la, la visita a los enfermos, el amor entre la gente, que sean más abiertos, que les importe uno del otro y no solamente si mezclan carne y leche. I, I think it's not only Polish problem. I think you can Pero find sí. it even in Israel or in places that are small. And, and this is very hard because we ne we didn't grow up in religious houses. So I'm not speaking about we're not used to going to synagogue, but also we're not used to this is what I love in Israel, that that you might be invited for Shabbos, but someone that doesn't know you. In Poland, you don't invite random people mm -hmm. who you don't know. En Israel está acostumbrada a la gente que puede invitar a quien sea a su casa en Shabbat. Claro, y en Polonia eso no existe. Es, no, no vas a, a, invitar, no vas a invitar a un desconocido a tu casa. Also because no one knows like the Shabbos meal is, is something that we all know what, how important it is. In Poland there is nothing like Shabbos meal. So there may be, even on, on Saturday, on a Sunday, when this is Christian day, people don't eat to, together. They don't gather together. There might be... Um, This might be Eastern or um, how you call it, uh, the Christian holidays. But it's like twice a year. We have holidays every month. 
So we have really opportunity and we cannot be with each other all the time. This is boring. So we invite other people, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we are boring for each other. I love my family, but being with them every Shabbos and every holiday, I want to... So there is a Sukkot. So we visit other Sukkot, mm -hmm. Sukkot right? How mm -hmm. long can you sit in one, one, one place? So you go to... You visit each other. We, yeah. we have it. We know it. And in Poland, there are two families and they don't like each other. Then you stay at your home, and, and you're not used to saying, oh, come over, right? Mm -hmm. And this is different also level, like with having kids. In Poland, you have one kid, two kids. In Israel, you have ten kids. They dress whatever, and it's, it's okay. And at home, you have balagan. <laughs> In Poland, you don't invite someone if your, your windows are not clean. <laughs> so it means no one can come to you like this. In Israel, you knock on the door, you come in, it's balagan or it's not a balagan. Kids are screaming, sababa. And here is like more word of Europe, right? Like Germany, I don't know, Spain. Everything needs to be perfect. And, and Jews are more into let's dance, let's sing. I don't care if you know how to sing or you know how to dance. It's simcha, so let's have a joy. And Poland, I don't know, this is a very upset country, maybe about because of Holocaust, maybe about all the story, I don't... But it's sometimes the, the Jewish joy and saying, okay, we're Jewish, I'm Israel, hi, goes more into like, I don't know you, I, I don't know you. Even people are with each other 20 years because they're the only Jews. Like, I, it's, so that's very difficult to cross and build really Jewish community. Okay. Ja tego, tego dotknąłem. Mhm. Este, no me quedó claro cuántos judíos hay en Polonia. No se sabe. No se sabe. Uh -huh. eh, eh, si dentro de la comunidad, bueno, de las personas que van a rezar a la comunidad, hay unión, integración, uh -huh. no sé, visita recíproco. No, no, porque está hablando justo ahora que no, no es como en Israel, que la gente, uh -huh. sus casas están abiertas y visitan uno al otro, por ejemplo, en Sukkot, por decir, a visitar a otra Sukkot. Allá hay pocas familias que lo practican y sí, como están juntos todo el tiempo y se conocen, eh, no, no se acostumbra, no se estila tanto. Y aparte de que no, tiene, no, no es que vas a invitar a tu casa a alguien cuando no está arreglada. Aquí en Israel es normal, si hay un poco desordenado, todo bien. Cualquiera puede venir y es aceptado. Es otro, es otro estilo. Y no, bueno, ella, no sé si va a estar eh, viajando de Israel a Polonia, Polonia a Israel, ella no puede eh, hacer un programa que, la, que los miembros de la comunidad se integren un poco más. Y yo, él, ahí, yo, 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 Ini initiative to to make to make people aware the style of life in Israel that they will adopt this style of life. We need to have Israelis in Israel. This is difficult because that's a good question. I grew I I was four years in Israel and uh, I know how kids what they dress up how they behave and I've learned it here and I have four kids now in Poland. And I let them be like like they were in Israel. And I feel I'm sh this th that's normal for Poland people in Poland. It's not normal, and it's hard to me each time to explain they behave okay, even this disturbs you because this is okay. <laughs> and I run a gun, and I see that my attitude in the gun is different than the parents. The parents are much more careful about every single what the child ate, bid you what they ate, what they did, and I like they ate something. I'm not saying Israelis are kacha. I'm just saying it's not the most important thing mm -hmm. if the child mm -hmm. ate carrot at 12 o'clock. And I wanna and I wanna so it's like there are other stuff that are more important. And I could say this is Israel, but the people would think I'm a bad mother. And they're different. And or I could we had just hupa. And I was dancing and screaming. And I would like to scream. This is normal. Actually, this is what I did. I took a microphone and said, like, We are dancing because it's a simha. And this is normal that we're dancing. It was me 
and two Israeli women. <laughs> and I said, they come from Israel. If it's me, you thought I'm crazy. They are Israelis. It's not crazy. It's Simha. We are dancing. Whole <laughs> Chupa, there were five women dancing. All of the rest were sitting and looking wow. what's going on. Later, when they had some alcohol, and I mamash <laughs> took the microphone saying, I'm not crazy that I'm dancing. It's Chupa. It's Simha. We love it. Israel. I'm Israel. Hi. Not every time you can say that actually this is how it should be. And I'm not role model. I can dance when it's chupa. I can have four kids, even they're dirty here. And, and I can try my best. But I'm Polish. They will not believe me. So that's why we want to have Israelis. And then if Israelis dance, it means, ah, Israelim. Yes, <laughs> it's okay. fine. <laughs> okay, this is okay. This is how they do it. And we have this Amir Bekehila and Laura came once. And we, we have this now, the new project of, of Israel is coming. But even if we have rabbis, right? We have a rabbi in Krakow. He's American Israeli. But still, he is a rabbi. He cannot do all the Israeli stuff because he is, you know, a Thai and a girl. He cannot dance now, Whoa! right? Because this is rabbi. So it's very difficult because we don't have enough people. We don't have e enough people, Israelis in Poland who show, and I think sometimes it's better to have an Israeli who is non not religious than a Pole who is religious. Because the Pope was religious, but look here, that's me, my Torah. And not religious Israel, he was like, oh, yeah, Manishma. Okay, so he will hug a woman, right? The woman in Poland will not hug a man because she's religious. The Israeli who is not religious will hug a woman. And sometimes it's better, you know, to have a joy, but we need Israelis. It's difficult to, to do it by yourself. And you see, some people like Israel, and that they show the Polacos that the way to be comfortable and be open and more happy and more joyous is fine. They are very strict and they can't be able to do certain kinds of things. Okay, so we have a question. Yes, yes. Okay, so we have a question. Yes, yes. Okay, so we have a question. Yes, yes. Do you think that this is how they were before the war also? I think so, but the story of Poland is very difficult because through the times, like Poland was always too weak to protect. So we have Germans who came and take what they wanted. We have Austrians who came and take what they wanted. We have Russians who came and take what they wanted. For a while, Poland did not exist on the map. And this is kind of like if there is someone who wants to rape the woman, he will. If there is someone who wants to steal, he will. Like, Poland is the place that you, everyone can come and do what they want. And uh, the only time that's really good was communism, when people gathered together knowing that or they will help each other or they will not survive. Or I will have a milk from this woman and I will give sugar to this woman or, or we'll have nothing to eat because there was no food in stores. So today, people are gathering if there is a crisis. Like, Polish people are great in gathering when there is a crisis. But today, there is no crisis. We're in the European Union. We have sugar in the stores. We have food. We just can have kosher food if we want. It's not like, it's not a war. So that's why everyone sits in their own house. But this is changing because the poli politics are not very well. We, we don't like the politics now. So there are more people are saying, okay, let's do something. Let's, let's, but it's not necessarily the Jewish population. So also, like, I would like to have the Jews to be stronger because we have enough anti shemites We have enough Ar Islam, like Arabs hating God. I have the feeling at least we should hold because we're brothers, sisters. Like, we don't have anyone else, right? I can have my mother who is Jewish, but she is she doesn't believe in those things that I believe. And my father is not Jewish. So who who do I have? Other Jews who are religious, not religious. So or I will love them and be happy for them and help them. 
but this is very hard to understand because it's more like oh I'm so poor oh I'm so poor I'm so poor it's like you don't see that other people are in the same like this is we're in the same position but also like Poland I think Poland it was always like this but this is a story of Poland and Radin as, as when we the city there right Radin in yes, Poland yes the Chofetz Chaim lived in Radin yes and he was all for being out of the Havero right to to think about your fellow Jews or maybe you should make him your like poster person like he's one of us yes this is what we had and, and let's let's study him, let's be like him, let's care for our fellow Jews. You know what I mean? Yes, and this needs to be done. Uh, but in order to do it, small things need to start. Like, you know, so that's why JCCs are built and the student organizations and the rabbis come. Like, But this might be a good idea for, for uh, and especially that many mm-hmm. Sadiqim come from Poland. And they had really beautiful thoughts. And this was all about being together, and, and um, maybe this is a good thought. Esther dice que por qué no toman como ejemplo a los al Kafetzaim, y de hecho hay muchos casamientos que vienen en Polonia, y dice que sí, que hay ya programas, por ejemplo, como la JCC, y otros programas en otras ciudades, dice al principio que había cuatro comunidades en Polonia, y más o menos como diez rabinos en total, Y tienen eso, pero ella dice que de todas maneras es una buena idea como hacer algo más grande y volver los iconos de las comunidades. No sé, son culturales históricos, o sea, no sé, conocer cuál fue la edición de la música de los castellanos, alguna vez los hay. Los hay, los hay. Sí. Yo también he visto que se hace más con, como contacto para hacer intercambios. Los dos, sí. M. They are asking if they are uh, programs. Uh, say, we know that yes, but there are. There, there are. Uh, seminars and uh, inter- internships and uh, programs like that um, for people from Israel to go there and uh, know the place and for Polish people to come to Israel and uh, yes. spread. Yes, so, so Shava Israel did a couple of seminars so Polish people could go to Israel and I know from those people that they've learned so much this was amazing and they've just learned a lot and I know that learning Sometimes you learn more not by visiting, but by going for Shabbos to a to a rabbi, and this is more than you can get by any shaliach. Or, um, but there are also Israel is coming to Poland. There are like, ideas, and of also this. from the schools, from the, mm-hmm. in the, I will say in Spanish, in the, las escuelas es cada año los niños en el a cierta edad creo que es en la secundaria que viajan a Polonia una vez al año es en el, el cómo se dice el intercambio el no intercambio ellos viajan a visitar es un, una visita de raíces y van a la no, no recuerdo bien si es el desfile de la vida así le llaman pero visitan los guetos visitan todo entonces es algo que existe sí hay Yeah. So now I would like to hear uh, more about the job of Shabbat Israel in uh, mm-hmm. Poland mm-hmm. Uh, along this uh, period of time that you okay. are in, co- in contact with the organization. So I met Shabbat Israel first of all when I met Rav Blas Pash, who used to be a chief rabbi of Krakow and an uh, amazing person, and she was Shaliah of Shabbat Israel. And also, uh, what was done in Krakow were seminars, and this was very nice because what what's important for Jews to gather? And this is what I said before that this is lacking of Jews that they're gathered. Mm-hmm. So if there were seminars, like two days of studying, studying, and people were coming from different places, so this was a job of of Shavi Israel to organize it. So we had 
going out to Israel for a week for Jews from whole Poland. And we had two couples who met in, uh, in Israel on such a, such a trip. And um, yes, you know that we had two couples who met on the Shavei Israel uh, trip to Poland. No? Yes, so to one couple met, I don't know, five years ago, because they went together, and I was on her chupa with the candle, and the other one uh, went two years ago, and they're married now. Wow, really and nice. and what I said that because Polish Jews are not very together, that they don't know each other. And Shava Israel, by trips like this to Israel or by seminars in Poland, helps them knowing each other because everyone wants to go to Israel, right? You're young, you want to go to Israel. You spend a week with someone else. You're in love. You never, you would never meet this person. And now apparently you live in the same town. You get married and you're happy. Or you go for three days of studying Torah. Sometimes you go because of Torah. Sometimes you go because you want to meet other Jews. Sometimes you go because your rabbi told you to go and you respect him. <laughs> and then you go and you learn Torah and you meet other people and you become friends forever. And this is a great thing. And also Shavei um, helps rabbis be in different places. And without Shavei's help, they won't wouldn't have money in order to be in Poland. <coughs> and there is, uh, for example, Rabbi Baumol in Krakow right now, and he studies Torah with people, and he makes gurus, and he prepares people to, to bar mitzvah, and bat mitzvah, and chupa, and like Rabbi in Poland does everything. Mm -hmm. And the same Rabbi Shuhovsky in Lodz, he also does everything, like chupa, like if someone dies, and at Filot and Shabbos and then and so on and so on. But we there used to be a um, rabbi in Warsaw and in Wrocław and then earlier in Krakow and then earlier in Krakow and actually Shave Israel plus there are also classes through internet, which is also very interesting because there are certain people if they are not in the Wrocław Lodge, Warsaw Krakow, they have no possibility to, to learn. So there is this class, for now it's one class, but there were more, so you can learn through internet. And it's also amazing because again, people learn Torah and they meet each other. So I know from my friend who spoke about a friend she never met, but they became friends. Mm -hmm. And then she started looking, this is amazing, a friend of mine said, my friend is in Lodge and you're in Lodge and she's looking for Shidduch, maybe you should help her. I didn't know the woman, but through this woman, who met this woman in, in Shavei, I met her. And um, so this helps, like Torah, I would say, is mamash the most important, to teach Torah, to learn Torah. But also what in Poland is important, that the people will get together and know each other. And also rabbis who we have in Poland those days, but also the rabbis who used to be, they had <coughs> amazing power and <laughs> and they empower people so like teaching stories again but they also do other stuff like okay so I remember Rabbi Ellis from he used to be in Katowice once he took four people for a trip uh, through all Poland and Raf Rafopert from Wrocław also did stuff so it's like um, connecting like it helps connecting people of course some of them make uh, Aliyah and we have many people who made Aliyah, uh, also through Shavei and thanks to Shavei. And then I also remember when uh, uh, Shavei helped me making Aliyah and then uh, this also like in personal and then helping people who already are in Israel. Like I have also friends from Jewish Poland, from Poland, Jews who came to Israel and then or they got small jobs or they volunteered, but also this this help them, you know, build the road. Like once you make Aliyah, you can get the money and even you can get the work. But if you have already someone who is your friend, it helps even more. And and I remember like Shavei was for, for many people as a, as a friend. Very nice. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, not so many people came. Thank you.
si ellos este, 